Hello, my name is Augusto and in this video, and this video is another tutorial on how to integrate your Bubble application with our plugin that allows you to link your Bubble application with the Firebase services, specifically the authentication and the Firestore database and the storage service. And in this video in particular, I will show you how to create your Firebase project. So let me go to my computer here. Here I have a new, a brand new account on Firebase uh, and I'll hit create a project in which you can create the name you want. So I'll call it Firebase Bubble Example and by doing so Firebase will create a unique ID for this uh, Firebase project for me and I'll hit continue. Uh, it will give you the choice to enable Google Analytics here, but you're not required to, so I'll just enable it and hit Create Project. It can take a few minutes, but let's wait for this project to finish. I'll pause the video and come back. So it didn't take long after all. The project is already created and ready for me to use it. I'll hit Continue and it will take me to my project's console and in this console we have some things we must do for it to be ready uh, for use on our Bobo application. The first thing being I must create an app inside this project. So when you create a Firebase project it doesn't uh, automatically create a, uh, an app for you. So we must create a web application. A web application because we will use it on Bubble. If you're using Flutterflow, Flutterflow or any other uh, mobile applications, you'll probably want to do it on Android and Apple too. But let's hit the web one. I'll call it Firebase Bubble Example Web App or something like that. I don't need to set it up on uh, Firebase hosting because we'll use Bubble for our hosting. So I'll just hit register app and wait for it to be ready. I'll just pause it and wait. Ah, there we go. It already created for us and gave us some credentials we'll, we'll use to feed uh, our plugin with the information it needs to work. But I'll leave that to another video because there is another important thing to do here that is to secure, to properly, properly secure your credentials. So I'll just hit continue for now. So our web app is initialized and now I must initialize the specific services I will use here. Let me enhance this screen a bit. Uh, and let's begin with the authentication one. So I'll click the authentication service on the build menu here and click on get started. So it will start my authentication service and here you can select some uh, authentication methods you, you would want to use on your application. The most basic one being email and password, but the plugin allows you to use Google, Facebook, and GitHub right now. Maybe we'll implement other kinds of authentication in the future, but right now those are the ones allowed. So let me just choose email and password, enable it, and hit save. And the authentication service now is almost ready. There's only one more thing you must do, and that, that is a step that most commonly uh, forget about that goes you must go to the settings of the authentication service on the authorized domains and enable your bubble application domain here if you have a custom domain you must allow your custom domain here but if you're only using the the basic uh, bubble application the bubble apps.io um, domain you must come here copy this link go back to your Firebase project, just remove everything from the root menu and add this root menu here as one of the allowed domains for your application to run. Otherwise, your authentication methods won't work on your bubble plug uh, on your bubble app, all right? So the, authentic the authentication part is ready. Now let's initialize the Firestore database. I must create my first database for this project here. All right, come on, load up and ready. Now you must create a database 
and you can choose one of the regions here. Uh, it has two kinds of regions. I won't uh, go deep into how the, the pricing of Firebase works, but basically the multi-region ones are more stable, uh, but they are a bit more expensive, and the regional ones are a bit cheaper and have a, a bit lower service level agreement. But come on, they are both more than 99% of uptime uh, in terms of service level agreement. So depending on your application, it can make little difference. But I'll choose the United States one, the basic one, and hit next. Uh, about this production mode or test mode, you can start with test mode. It will allow everything to happen on your database for at least some time. In this case of mine, until the, the July the 24th here of July. So I'll hit create and it will create the cloud Firestore for me. And let me hit pause until it is ready. So after it, it finished setting up my, my Firebase data, my Firestore database here, it shows me this console here in which I can create collections, documents, but we want to do this through here. We'll do this through our bubble app, right? So now that the Firestore database is initialized, last but not least, I must initialize the storage service. So I go to the storage service and hit on get started. I'll choose the test mode too, and it will create a storage bucket for me, uh, default into the same location in which I put my Firestore collection and my Firestore database. So I hit done and it will create the bucket. Let me pause again. See you in a bit. And there you go, the storage is ready, the storage service. So what we, did we do here? We created a Firebase project, uh, created a web application on it, uh, initialized the authentication, the Firestore database and the storage services that we will use on our plugin that I have already installed here. It's the Firebase Auth, Firestore and Storage plugin on Bubble. And in other videos, I'll show you how you can properly set up the, the plugin and secure your credentials, all right? So I'll see you guys next time.